1380 AM WTYM. Glad to have you with us today. David and friends on the air with you right now. And uh, I'm going to go the whole way to Alaska for this particular interview. You know, we've had some snow recently, but uh, nothing like it is in Alaska. And uh, a man who used to be here for many, many years, he uh, lived right here in Armstrong County, but now is up in Alaska, and his name is Alan Dunn. Good morning, Alan. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. And I, I wanted to just talk to you just a little bit about uh, what you're doing. What are you doing in Alaska? Running sled dogs. <laughs> running? I'm up here in Fairbanks. I'm up here in Fairbanks. Um, running sled dogs being trained by Lance Mackey, four-time Iditarod champion and Yukon Quest champion. Now, i, I got to just ask you because, you know, living here in Armstrong County, you may have had some snow maybe a month or two out of the year, but how did you ever get interested in dog sledding? Uh, I went to the Chapman State Park, the winter fest they have up there every year, and, and uh, they have, as a matter of fact, it was last weekend, and um, they had some dog sled uh, races up there, so I went up one, one year and uh, seen it, and I said, you know, there's something... I'd like to do so. I just started gathering dogs up, uh, Siberians at first, and then uh, I switched over to Alaskans. Now, what's the difference between the two of them? Uh, a Siberian is a registered um, dog. It's um, your typical husky, um, but Alaskans it's basically a, a Siberian mixed with dogs with speed, um, hounds, you know, bird dogs pointers and stuff like that to get the speed. They're just basically a mutt, basically, but they run much faster and longer, and uh, they give you everything they got. They're, they're wonderful dogs. Now, when did you start doing this? I started that uh, mushing probably, I would say, about nine years ago on rails to trails. Uh, I looked up towards Templeton, and I would run from um, Wick City up to Brady and back. Um, which is probably 50 miles. So you mean when the trail was covered? Was no, I had a cart that had wheels on it, and I would train with that. And then uh, when we got snow, I would actually um, take the sled down and start using the sled. But for the most part, there wasn't a whole lot of snow, and um, I had to use mostly my cart, you know, to train my dogs. Wow. But I, I, I have actually raced up in uh, Fort Kent, Maine, the Can Am. Um, the 60 mile, and I went to uh, Newberry, Michigan to run the Cine 300, and uh, uh, really enjoy it, um, and decided, to, well, I'm not getting any younger, I better get to Alaska, and, and my goal is to do the, uh, the Yukon Quest, which I am in this year for the 300 mile, it starts February 3rd, and um, next year I'm going to do the 1,000 mile quest, which runs from Whitehorse, Canada, up the Yukon River, and into Fairbanks. Now, and, what, uh, how long does it take to run a 300-mile? Last year, I ran a 200-mile race, and it took me 39 hours and 33 minutes to run 200 miles. So, you know, you run the dogs 40, 50, 60-mile runs, you rest them four or five hours, and then you run them again 50, 60, 70 miles. You know, these dogs can do over 100 miles a day and burn 10,000 calories in one run. So, you know, these are, these are amazing animals. Um, so hopefully not too long. <laughs> well, and, uh, so what do you do then by day? I mean, you know, you're you're running the, the. I assume this is for fun, but what what else do you do by day? Uh, this is basically it. I get up in the morning and um, I feed them in the morning and clean up after them, and then I feed them in the evening and I clean up after them again and. Um, and then I, I train them. I, you know, beginning of the season, we start in September, we, we start, you know, two or three miles and, and work up to 30, 40 miles, 50 miles. And then um, run them two or three days on and a couple days off to switch it around. Run them at any time. You want to keep them guessing when you're going to run them, you know, I run them at two or three in the morning, you know, any time of the day we run them. How many dogs does it take to do this? Different races take different dogs. No, they have the race that I'm in, the uh, 300 mile, is 12 dogs. And um, you start with 12, and you know, um, if something happens to one of the dogs and they pull a muscle or sprain a, a wrist or something like that, or um, you drop the dog and they ship it back to the, the starting line, and then um, you, you keep going with the dog. 
dogs that you have. You cannot replace them. Okay. So, you, you know, it all comes down to training. And um, dogs do get hurt. I mean, they pull muscles and stuff just like people do on runs. So basically, the, the idea is you want to keep as many dogs, obviously, on with that sled as, as possible. Right, right. No, the 300-mile, um, the like I said, is 12 dogs. The 1,000-mile is 14. And the Iditarod is 16 dogs. And uh, on the Iditarod, I think um, you have to finish with at least six dogs. You know, you have to cross, when you cross the finish line, you have to have at least six dogs. If you get below that, you have to scratch. Wow. But um, as you're running, there's checkpoints along the way. Um, on this 300-mile race coming up, uh, there's four, four checkpoints. Um, the first run is 72 miles. The second run, which goes over a summit, is 44 miles. And then the second run is over another summit, which is 28 miles. And you come in the circle, and there's a six-hour mandatory rest. And then the, the last two runs were about 70-some miles apiece. How many people... So down, pardon? And I was just going to ask how many people like do this. I mean, is it, you're talking like maybe 30 sledders, or, or how many do this? Uh, there's, I think there's 22 mushers in the uh, 300, and there's 25 or 26 mushers this year in the 1,000. Wow. Yeah. And the 1,000-mile race, they'll actually stop in Dawson City. Um, Canada, and I uh, have a 36-hour layover there. Well, it's a pretty good race. Yeah, I mean, that's the length of, alone. So now, what do you get if, if you win? What do you get? Uh, they have prize money. I mean, the Quest has, um, I really don't, I'm not sure on the prize money because I don't look at it like that, you know. I know the Diderot's probably 72000 in a new truck. Mm. And the um, Diderot, I think it's... Um, Twenty or thirty thousand dollars for first place, but they pay out to fifth or sixth place, I think, on the quest. And um, you did a run, I think they pay out to twentieth position. So I mean, it's about being on the trail with the dogs, basically for me. You know, just being out there and, and seeing the interior of Alaska by dog sled. What better way to see it? Uh, I'll do the cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. How do you dress? Is there special insulated clothes that you have on, uh, you know, just layer after layer or what? Yeah, I ate, um, a lot of cold weather gear. Um, I've gone down and bought some stuff from the military and used it, which is really good. Uh, they got some good stuff out in um, coveralls, down jackets and stuff like that. Um, for the most part, a lot of hand warmers and foot warmers, you know. Um, it gets pretty cold on the trail, very cold. And uh, I've been training on the Alaskan pipeline some. Um, it's not very far from the cabin that I live in. Uh, they, it's, it's really hilly with the cabin I'm staying in, and um, it's it's off grid. Um, I have to go get my own water, and and um, we have a generator for electricity, and uh, we have an outhouse. Or bathroom, so you know, just basic stuff. Uh, so you, with the, the term mountain man, you are truly the the mountain man. Up there. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, I know Lance Mackey, who I'm I'm written from his cabin here. It, uh, like I said, he's won the Iditarod four times, and he's a pretty tough guy. He's a good guy, and uh, um, they have a um, a movie out about him right now. It's called The Great Alone. It's on Netflix. Anybody wants to watch it, it's a really good story about him. Um, now, what? But, uh, how old are you right now? I'm 58. So how long can you do this? Uh, there's people running in their 70s. You know, um, 70 years old. I mean, I'm a, actually one of my plans are is I'm going to stay up here for three years. I think I'm going to come back to Armstrong County and buy a piece of ground and, and uh, start a touring business with the sled dogs. I mean... I'd like to give the people from Western PA a, a chance to ride on a, a Diderot sled dog team because uh, 
I'm going to do the Iditarod in 2020, March of 2020 is my plans. And um, that'll be my, I think, my last race in Alaska. Then I'm going to move back and uh, give the people a chance to to ride on a sled, or if not, a cart. And uh, go from there. I do love Pennsylvania. It's beautiful there, and uh, my family's there, so uh, I want to come back. Now, what about the ages of the dogs? Are they young? Are they are they all different ages? My my dogs. This this race here, I have six that are yearlings. They're probably um, a little over a year old. They're, there's one of them. That my team's gonna. It's, it's twelve months, and um, five of them are fourteen months. So I have a young team, and then I have um, three or four veterans. You know, but um, they've been doing really well. I mean, I'm I'm really excited about the race. And um, I'm kind of anxious to see where I'm going to place. All I want to do is be able to finish the race with 12 healthy dogs. That's my goal. Now, and if, if I place anywhere, um, that's just gravy on top of it. But for I just want to finish the race because that's it takes a lot out. You don't get much sleep because you're taking care of the dogs all the time, and it's cold. So, you know, 300 miles is a long way with dogs. Where do the dogs stay in that kind of cold weather? Do they stay outside? Yeah, they're, they're, they're in boxes, and, and um, we go through once a month and replace the straw, and um, they thrive in this, this kind of weather, these dogs. It could be minus 30 degrees, and you go outside, and you're laying in the snow. I mean, you just love it. Hmm. But, I, you know, I have, I, I have jackets and, uh, for the dogs for the race, and... Uh, Rock them into a checkpoint, and um, we put booties on them too to protect their, their pads. And when they come into a checkpoint, I'll take the booties off and uh, put the coats on. So and then we put straw down for them so they can lay in the straw, and and then we cook them up a hot meal because I have a cooker in my sled, and uh, so we'll do that at every every checkpoint. And uh, you know, we take care of these dogs, and they all have their shots, and they and there's. The, the vets check them out before the race, and there's a, there's vets at every checkpoint. When you come in, if you have a problem, you talk to the vet. They, they, take, they take really good care of the dogs, the vets. Well, Alan, I, I appreciate you sharing this with me. Now, again, the race is in February. What date? February 3rd. If anybody wants to follow me on the race, you go to the Yukon Quest webpage and go to the 300-mile race and punch my name in, Alan Dunn, and you can you can track me on my progress, um, where I'm at on the trail, and I'll show you my times that I'm, I'm stopping, my average speed, um, everything. I mean, you can, you know, basically follow me through the whole thing. I mean, if anybody's interested. Well, we definitely are interested because uh, you're, the, you're the hometown guy that's doing this, and uh, this is an exciting, uh, I guess I'll call it a sport, it's a uh, it's a wonderful thing to know somebody here from Armstrong County putting themselves out there for this. It's obviously your passion. It's something that you uh, want to accomplish in your life, and uh, and you're planning on doing it. And you've 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 put a lot already into it. I, I would imagine these dogs are your friends. I mean, they're like family. Oh, they're my best friends. I mean, I have three in the cabin right now with me, and and I'll bring one in. Um, you know, let them sleep here at night. And, and, or a little perk for them. They mean everything to me. I'm sure um, they're, they're loyal. That's why I'm here. Yeah, they're they're great. They really are. Okay, well, we, we expect a phone call after you're all done because uh, we'll, we will try to track you, and uh, but we definitely want to know uh, how, how it all went and and uh, perhaps another interview when you, whenever you're all finished. So uh, keep us uh, up to date right here on WTYM, will you? I will. All right. Thank you, sir. I Alan, appreciate it. have a great day. We appreciate talking to you today, and uh, we'll be back in touch. You'll be back in touch. Alan Dunn, up in up in Alaska, uh, was still Fairbanks. part of, uh, Fairbanks. Yeah, still part of the United States. But uh, on the other hand, uh, it's the cold part, minus thirty up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm David Coyle. This is David and Friends. We'll be right back right after this. Don't go away. More to come this morning on the program. <laughs>